Well, welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report, where we talk about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. Thank you so much for joining me again. The first little bit of news that I wanted to talk about today is actually two bills being introduced in Vermont and Michigan. In Vermont, Democratic Representative George Till has introduced the first of several bills that he plans on introducing with the intent of keeping e-cigarettes out of the hands of Vermonters under 21. Obviously, this first piece of legislation being introduced is going to attempt to change the minimum purchase age of tobacco products from 18 to 21. And the language that they use isn't even just tobacco products. It says purchasing and possessing tobacco, tobacco substitutes, or tobacco paraphernalia. Always have to use a little bit of an alarmist word like paraphernalia in there, just so it sounds worse and maybe a little bit more drug related. It could have easily just used the word accessories, but that doesn't sound as scary as paraphernalia. The second and more alarming bill that Democratic representatives Representative George Till has introduced is a full-on online sales ban. George Till had to say, We've had such an explosion of the utilization of these e-cigarettes that it has completely endangered 50 years of progress on reducing tobacco utilization because your brain does not care whether you became addicted to nicotine from electronic cigarettes or traditional tobacco. You need that nicotine. And he's absolutely right there. Your brain doesn't know the difference between nicotine from a cigarette or nicotine from an electronic, less harmful vape paper product, but I think it's pretty safe to say that your body and lungs definitely know the difference. One of those products is packed with additives and carcinogens, things that lead to, you know, lung disease, lung cancer, COPD, emphysema, and the other is a tobacco harm reduction tool that is 95% less harmful for you. Democratic Representative George Till loves to just make up stuff too, I think. He says in this article, there are 10,000 kids in Vermont using tobacco who could die prematurely because of their nicotine use. Representative Till, you can't just throw numbers out there that aren't backed up by anything. Where did this 10,000 number even come from? And outside of cigarette smoking, is there anybody in the history of America that has become sick or died from just nicotine use? Nicotine use from a product that is 95% less harmful for you? And I think the last quote in this article from Representative Till is very telling. He doesn't mention anything about protecting public health. He says, I think there's a pretty good awareness in the building of how much of a problem this is becoming. It's got a fair amount of publicity. I think this has a very good chance. So he's stoked that his bill might pass just because of all the publicity and outrage that vaping has been getting. He didn't even try to dance around the subject of public health. But that's not all that's happening in Vermont. In addition to the 18 to 21 bill being introduced, in addition to the full online internet sales ban being introduced, He's also introducing another bill that's going to tax e-cigarettes at the same rate that regular tobacco is taxed. And here's basically where I land on all of this. There's no data to show that changing the minimum tobacco purchase age from 18 to 21 accomplishes anything. All that's getting accomplished by changing that age from 18 to 21 is now you have 18 to 21 year old smokers that now don't have access to a much less harmful alternative. And by banning internet sales in the state like some some other states have done, including Utah, all you're going to do is make sure that people who rely on these vapor products to stay away from smoking are going to have less access to those vapor products that keep them away from smoking. And the state of Vermont, not unlike California, is part of the Tobacco Master Settlement Agreement. In fact, of May of last year, they cashed out $28 million in tobacco bonds. So like the state of California, if they wish to keep receiving these bonds from Big Tobacco, they need more cigarette sales. And I think raising the age from 18 to 21, banning internet sales, and taxing less harmful vapor products at the same rate as tobacco products will probably generate a lot more cigarette sales. Which in the end, that sounds like what Representative George Till wants to do anyway. And now moving to the bill in Michigan, they are of course introducing bills in Michigan to keep youth access away from vapor products. But if passed, the way that they're doing this in Michigan is to treat vapor products much more like a controlled substance. Under House Bill 4017 in Michigan that's getting introduced, possession of vapor products by someone underage would be a misdemeanor. And those misdemeanors can carry penalties in the form of fines or up to 16 hours of community service for getting caught possessing vapor products. Second time offenders would have to do 32 hours of community service and third time offenders would have to do 48 hours of community service. The strangest part
part about this whole legislation is it's based on a study that was done in Michigan recently, conducted and carried out by the University of Michigan. It was called the Monitoring the Future Survey, which they don't link directly to the Monitoring the Future study in this article. They link to the Monitoring the Future website and you have to do some digging to find this study. Thankfully, I was able to find the actual study from Monitoring the Future, which I'll be putting down in the description below. This survey was based on 45,000 eighth 10th and 12th grade students. I don't know why they didn't include high school freshmen or high school juniors in this, but they interviewed 45,000 8th grade, 10th grade, and 12th grade students, and then through their answers came to the conclusion that 1.3 million youths are using e-cigarettes. Interviewing 45,000 students and then coming to the conclusion that 1.3 million students are using electronic cigarettes that math doesn't add up, does it? And I guess here's where I land on this Michigan bill. It's a real interesting way of doing it, isn't it? It's strange to me that the parents in Michigan are okay with the state of Michigan treating their kids like criminals. An eighth grader getting caught with a vapor product, having a misdemeanor on his record, a $50 fine, and 12 hours of community service? That just seems very excessive to me. And the fact that they added in second and third offender penalties as well kind of just goes to show that they don't believe this is going to dissuade people on the first time. I'll have links down in the description to both the Vermont bill and the Michigan bill so you can read them for yourself. I'll also be putting in the description the contact info for the representatives introducing these legislations. So if you're in Vermont or if you're in Michigan, absolutely feel free to reach out to these elected officials. They do work for you. And shifting gears heavily from that, we're going to take a little trip across the ponds to Auckland, Australia, where MPs there are urging the government to make vapor products more accessible to smokers. MP Nikki Wagner in Auckland, Australia said, The Ministry of Health has highlighted the potential for vaping to be used as a smoking cessation tool to help achieve smoke-free 2025, and yet the government will not move to make e-cigarettes and vaping devices more accessible. Auckland, Australia has a smoke-free goal of 2025 by utilizing less harmful vapor products. MP Nikki Wagner has also been very critical of Australia government talking about the year-over-year -year tax increases on tobacco products, saying that yes, these year-over-year -year increases on tobacco prices are stopping people from starting smoking, but she says, now we must help our most ingrained smokers who are not put off by price by providing an alternative like vaping. Obviously, MP Nikki Wagner in Australia doesn't want vaping to just run rampant and be un completely unregulated in the country. She describes the regulations she's introducing. These regulations would prohibit sales to under 18, allow the ability to encourage vaping on tobacco products, ensure there are appropriate rules around advertising, set quality standards, require the Ministry of Health to approve products, and prohibit vaping in smoke-free areas. I personally feel like that is very reasonable. And she goes on to say, This is the time of year when people make choices to better their lives, and we need to give smokers the ability and the options to make those choices when it comes to quitting. The government must respond to the call for alternatives like vaping. I apologize. I believe I've been saying Auckland, Australia, and that's definitely not correct. It is Auckland, New Zealand. They're just so close. It's easy to get them mixed up, right? It's always such an interesting contrast to see how other countries like New Zealand and like the United Kingdom are embracing vaping as a form of tobacco harm reduction. Both countries believe they will be smoke-free by 2022 and 2025, respectively. Meanwhile, in the United States, we have Democratic Representative George Till, who wants to to tax vapor products at the same rate as tobacco products. He wants to limit and restrict adult access by banning internet sales. And he wants to make smokers and vapors in the 18 to 21 year old category out in the cold, illegal for them. America's just the land of freedom, isn't it? And the last thing I wanted to talk about in today's 510 report has to do with pharmaceutical giant Pfizer. Back in November 2018, right here on the 510 report, we talked about the FDA introducing the idea of possible drug therapies for your kids kids who may be using an e-cigarette, a 95% less harmful e-cigarette. I just feel like I have to throw that in there every time. Well, those potential drug therapies for your kids are currently being tested by Pfizer and their quit smoking drug Chantix. Pfizer Inc. released a statement on Friday saying that its first initial tests of testing out their quit smoking drug Chantix on adolescents 
failed. They said the study did not meet its main goal of the four week continuous abstinence rate at weeks nine through 12 for Chantix compared to placebo. They also said the side effects from Chantix was also observed in these adolescents. Those remain unchanged, which I don't know if you ever read the side effects of Chantix, but it is not pretty. Side effects like nausea, stomach pain, indigestion, constipation, gas, vomiting, headaches, weakness, tiredness, unusual dreams, night terrors, sleep problems, insomnia, headache, dry mouth, burning feeling in the feet or toes, unusual pain in the legs when walking. Pfizer wants to give your kids Chantix and is already actively testing Chantix on adolescents. Fortunately, I guess for everybody, that study failed, but I have a feeling that this isn't going to stop Pfizer. I get the vibe that they're gonna do whatever they can to develop a drug to give your kids. Nowhere else in the world is this happening. There are no big pharmaceutical companies in the United Kingdom developing drugs for your kids to get them off of vapor products. There are no big pharmaceutical groups in New Zealand developing drugs to get your kids off of vapor products. But for some reason here in the United States, we just kind of let big pharma do whatever. Sure, drugs? You want to give drugs to my kid? Okay. And I think right there is where we're going to end this week's 510 report. As always, I would love to get your feedback down in the comments below. As I said earlier, if you're in Vermont or you are in Michigan, all of that information, including the representatives that introduced the bills, their contact information will be down in the description below. I can't end the 510 report without also mentioning Kassad.org. Go and sign up. It's free. It's easy. All you need is an email. If you want to know about possible negative vape legislation happening in your particular city, state, or area, Kasa, kasa.org, follow the calls to actions. And as Kevin Skipper always said, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. <laughs>